Hey, everyone, and welcome to the All It Takes is a Goal podcast, the best place in the entire world, including all of Canada, to learn how to build new thoughts, new actions, and new results. I'm your host, John Aka, and today... I'm going to teach you how to do 10 micro goals. But first, let's listen to a quick word from today's sponsor of this episode. Today's sponsor is me. I've been really surprised at how many people who listen to this podcast have reached out to me about having me speak at their events. I love that. And here's why. Over the last 13 years, I've had the honor to help hundreds of companies like Nissan, Walmart, Microsoft, and Comedy Central at events around the world. And during that time, I've developed three big goals for your event. Number one, I want to slingshot your audience into the best year they've ever had. Whether I'm opening, closing, or somewhere in the middle of the event, I want to launch everyone out of that room with actionable, memorable things that they can apply to their work and lives immediately. Number two, my second goal, I want the sound team engaged and laughing. The sound team has heard it all. They have. And if I can make them laugh and learn along the way, the audience is going to absolutely love the keynote. And number three, my third goal, I want you to get text messages during the keynote. My favorite sentence to hear from you after I speak is, John, my phone was blowing up during your keynote. I'm there to make you look like a rock star, not me. If your boss texts you during my speech and compliments you on how well the event is going, then I know I've done my job. Whether it's virtual or live, 10,000 people in an arena or 15 sales team members on WebEx or Zoom or, or Microsoft Teams, I'd love to help you with your next event. Fill out the quick form at acuff.me slash speaking to check my availability. That's acuff, A-C-U-F-F dot M-E slash speaking. All right, let's jump right into today's episode. I think that a lot of people don't try goals, don't try resolutions, because it's it's January. Um, this this episode will air. It'll go live on January 3rd. So it's January, or maybe it's March for you later. I don't know when it is for you. But for most people listening to this, it's January, the month of new resolutions, the month of new year, new you. And I think a lot of people tend to feel overwhelmed by resolutions. That's why they don't try them. That's why they don't try goals in general. I'm always surprised how many people will tell me, John, I want to achieve this. I want to achieve that. And I'll go, okay, well, what are your goals related to that? And they'll go, I don't really have any specific goals. And I think people feel overwhelmed because they try to do too much. There's this real temptation that I think is just something humans do. I don't, I don't think birds do this. Like, I always think about that. There's a, a story in The Little House on the Prairie. I have, I have daughters, so of course, by law, I have to have read Little House on the Prairie and a, the variety of other books that come with them. And there's this one scene where Pa is talking about muskrats. I believe it's muskrats. And one of the kids is asking about why they build their little muskrat house or whatever a muskrat lives in. It's just like a hole in the mud that certain way. And Pa says, well, a muskrat always builds that. That's the only house a muskrat can build. And it's actually really profound about the difference between humans and animals. Like a cardinal can never build a modern nest. A cardinal can never be like, I just want something that's clean and really white and fresh and open. I want an open living space. A cardinal builds the same nest. Every cardinal in the world builds the same nest. But we humans have this ability to try so many different things and do so many different things. And with that comes this pressure sometimes to do all of them at once in massive, massive ways. That was actually one of the things that came up during the research for my book, Finish. I wrote this book called Finish about finishing goals. The basic question I was trying to answer is, can you go from being a chronic starter into a consistent finisher? And I commissioned a research study with my favorite researcher, Mike Peasley, PhD. I always say the PhD because dude has a PhD. If I had a PhD, I would probably be at the neighborhood pool like, hey, what's going on, Jim? Got a PhD. What? The kids look great this summer. The swim league is going to be fantastic. So we do this big research study. And if you want to know more about it, check out finishcourse.com. There's a six video series where we talk through all these ideas. It's really, really fun, really, really helpful. If you've got a big goal, finishcourse.com. But anyway, one of the things that comes up is that we get this sense that people are overestimating what they can get done. We get this sense that 
that's hurting their goals. And I, I had this belief. I kept seeing this come up over and over again in conversations, in the research. So let's say, let's say your goal um, is to lose a couple pounds. Like that's a pretty common goal. And let's say you say, you know what? I'm going to lose 10 pounds. I'm going to lose 10 pounds. And you lose eight. Most people don't feel like they got close to the goal. A lot of people go, ugh, I didn't hit my goal. I failed at my goal. And they quit. Now, what if you cut that goal in half? What if you cut it to five? You're going to lose five pounds. You'd lose the same eight, the same exact eight, but you would have won by three and you would have continued another time. That's my big thing. I don't necessarily care about the initial goal. I care about the goal after that and the goal after that and the goal after that. So we tested that. We went to the research studies and all the participants. So we said, hey, this is in the middle of the process. We said, okay, will you cut your goal in half? Will you try to cut that in half and see what happens? And the people who cut their goal in half, this is crazy. We're 63% more successful. 63% more successful. Now, what's funny is when I talk about that idea in a speech to corporations, I have to quickly say, whoa, 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 this isn't prescriptive. Because I have a slide that says the people who cut their goal in half are 63% more successful than the people who didn't. And if you don't explain it well, it sounds like I'm saying to sales teams, just cut your goals in half, sell half of the product. But that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just using that as an indication of how bad most people are at estimating their goals. I would never go into my publisher and go, hey, I'm going to try to sell half as many books this year. They wouldn't let me do that. No, I think you should sell and build and do amazing things, big things, things that are challenging. I would never say the plan for a good goal is to come up with a crazy goal and then midway cut it in half. That's a terrible life plan. But that's just an indication of how bad most people are at coming up with the results. So today I want to teach you one of the ways one of, the, one of the tools to fix that. And we're going to fix that. We're going to address that by doing a micro goal. What's a micro goal? A micro goal is a small action that generates big results. That's all it is. A small action that generates big results. A micro goal punches above its weight. I love that description, that phrase, this idea of like it punches above its weight. It outperforms based on its size. A micro goal is, is like a wolverine. It's tiny, it's seemingly harmless, but it's able to inflict significant damage on the stuck areas of your life. And every time I think about Wolverine, I don't think about the comic books or the movies or anything like that. I think about something that happened to me um, when I was in Vietnam. So a few years ago, you guys raised money to build two kindergartens in Vietnam. Some of you, if you're, if you're new to the kind of bank of ideas experience, might not have heard that story. Basically, um, maybe I think it was 11 years ago, I said, hey, let's build a kindergarten in Vietnam to all my blog readers. And I thought it would take 30 days because it's $30,000. I'd never done that. And we raised the entire amount of money in 18 hours. And then we doubled down. We're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. We doubled down. We raised another $30,000. We built two kindergartens in Vietnam, which is bonkers. There's a plaque on a kindergarten in Vietnam that says from the readers of SCL, because that was the acronym for my website. And it's just amazing. You guys absolutely crushed it. You crushed the Thistle Farms goal we recently did where we were doing candles for the Thistle Farms organization. You guys are amazing. And what was funny was in the villages where we built these kindergartens, they didn't even have that grade. You added a whole grade. I don't know that the kids were super happy about that, but the parents were. Like kindergarten didn't exist because they didn't have a facility. And then you guys added that whole grade to that village. It was really, really fun. But one of the teams that we worked with there in Vietnam, he was an American family. um, And I was talking to the dad. He'd been there for 30 years in Vietnam. Amazing guy. Love that country. And he told me a story that when his daughter was six years old, she read a book about a raccoon, like this children's book about a friendly raccoon. And she said, dad, I'd love to have a pet raccoon. And he was like, well, I mean, we live in Vietnam. Like there's so many different animals here. Let's see if we can get a raccoon. Let's go for it. So he went to the uh, local pet store. He brought the book, the children's book, and he pointed at the picture of the raccoon. He's like, hey, can you get me one of these? And the guy was like, one week, one week. So one week passes. They go back later. There's a small cage um, with a blanket over it. And he goes, I got, you know, here's a raccoon. Here's a raccoon. Pulls the blanket off. And in the corner is the most ferocious 
angry animal just hissing, like ready to rip somebody's face off. And my friend said, I'm pretty, pretty sure that man had somehow trapped a Wolverine or, or purchased a Wolverine through some sort of Wolverine purchasing plan. I don't know. But he said, I can't, I can't take that home to my daughter. And I always laugh about that every time I think about Wolverines. But that's what a micro goal is. It's a small, powerful action that generates big results. Big results. It punches above its weight. So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to share 10 different micro goals, 10 different goals that you could do. Small ones. They're not massive. Most of them take like 10, 15 minutes at the most. And this list came from working with thousands of people. I taught thousands of people a bunch of micro goals. And these were ones that really seemed to have a great impact on people's lives. When people would commit to them, it really helped them. And I will say, we tried it for 90 days, but I think you should try it for 30 days. Let's ease on in to 2022. Like nobody needs to go from like zero to 1 million miles an hour. Like I meet so many people that say, okay, I haven't written all year, but now I'm going to write my entire book in this weekend. And then it just falls apart. So I want us to ease on in to 2022. I think you should just commit for 30 days. What if you tried these micro goals, like one of them, you don't have to do all 10, you don't have to do three even, just pick one and try a micro goal for 30 days and then see what happens. See what happens during the month, see what happens after the month. So that's what I want you to do. So I'm going to go through the list and I'll explain each one, even though they're really simple. And then I dare you to pick one. Just pick one. You ready? Okay. Number one, read 10 pages of a success book. I think every day for 30 days in a row, you should read 10 pages of a success book. Okay, now, what's a success book? I define that as any nonfiction book that pushes you forward with encouragement, ideas, or advice. It can be a business book. It can be a self-help book. It can be a health book. It can be an autobiography. I, I talked to a real estate kind of mogul the other day, and he said one of his favorite books was an autobiography. Was it autobiography or biography? I always get those backwards. Anyway, it was a book about Napoleon. He really liked understanding the leadership of Napoleon. It can be biography. It could be the Bible, et cetera. Here are a few that I've been reading the last month or so. Ninja Selling by Larry Kendall. And we'll, we'll link these. I'll give you four book ideas, um, but we'll link these in the show notes. I've been reading Ninja Selling by Larry Kendall. I like to read outside of my space. This is a real estate book and I am not in real estate. But I learned a long time ago that if I just read the same books that everyone that does what I do is reading, we all end up with the same conclusions and the same ideas. So I like to get outside of my space and a real estate book does that. I first heard about this book when I spoke at an event for Sotheby's International Realty. Sotheby's, that team are full of ballers. Like they are amazing. They, I don't even know if we're using the term baller anymore. Some of the other day was like, oh, your language is so old. Like it's five years old. Like you say, dude. And I was like, oh, you would be so disappointed if you knew me in real life. Cause I say, dude, all, I didn't know we were officially not allowed to say that. Like I didn't, nobody let me know that I couldn't say dude, or maybe baller got retired too. I don't know. So that'd be amazing. And I met all these top agents and they would say, oh, there's this book I like. There's this book I like. There's this book I like. And so many people kept recommending it. So I'm reading Ninja Selling by Larry Kendall and it's amazing. Another book I'm reading is The Goal by Eli Goldratt and Jeff Cox. This is another book that's kind of outside my space. It's about how to run a factory, how to run the production of a factory. And it's written as a novel and it's really fascinating. I really like this book. Um, it's really challenged me about a lot of the unnecessary work I'm doing in my own business. I have a small business and I don't have a massive factory, but the principles really overlap with the things I'm producing. So I'm reading this book called The Goal. It sold 6 million copies. So anytime I see a book that sold 6 million copies, I can assume that's a baller book. Oh, there it is again. Dude, what? Oh, full circle. Okay, another book, The Molecule of More. It's by Daniel Lieberman and Michael Long. And it's about the science of dopamine. And I love that title, The Molecule of More. I'm curious about dopamine in my own life, how it motivates goals, how it relates to goals. And the last one is The Gift, Creativity and the Artist in the Modern World. It's by Lewis Hyde. 
My friend Jeff Goins recommended it. He's another writer. He's another speaker. And he's a, he's a fantastic reader. You know those people in your life that are like, they have kind of insight into books that you'll really like? I feel like Jeff Goins is one of those people for me. So he recommended The Gift. That's what I'm reading. And if you want more book recommendations from me, follow me on Goodreads. We'll link that in the show notes. But I'm going to do more on Goodreads this year. I, you feel like it's such a fun community to be part of. Check me out on Goodreads. First one. Read 10 pages of success book. Second micro goal, encourage one person. Encourage one person. It doesn't have to be a handwritten letter with a wax seal or an elaborate speech over an endless coffee. Just once a day, say one encouraging thing to one person. Text a friend, you know, was thinking about you today, about how fun our hiking trip was. You're amazing at organizing adventures like that. And I'm so glad I get to go on them with you. Tell your spouse your favorite thing about them. Share a compliment with a coworker. Thank a neighbor for letting you borrow a ladder. It can be anything. Keep a list of the people you encourage if you really want to see kind of the fun throughout the month. And, and here's a really simple way to blow someone's mind. This is the easiest way, in my opinion, to blow someone's mind. When they tell you something that's important to them and it's related to a date, write it down in your phone. So if somebody says, you know, our daughter um, is going to college. Like our, first, our oldest kid is going to college. We're dropping her off this Thursday and we're all kind of nervous about it. In your phone on Friday, have a little meeting reminder that says, ask Bill about college drop-off. And then you're going to get the meeting reminder and you're going to go, oh, oh yeah, that's right. You're going to text Bill and Bill is going to say what everyone says back to you in these moments. Thank you for thinking of me. Thank you for thinking of me. It will blow their mind. Encourage one person once a day. Third one, walk, run, or bike a mile. That's it. Walk, run, or bike a mile. Does a mile feel endless? Do you live on the moon and spacewalks are a huge hassle? John, you don't understand. I live on the moon and what you're asking is difficult. Fair enough. Instead of a mile, you can do any form of exercise that takes you 15 minutes. The goal is that every day you're moving your body for a quarter of an hour. I prefer the mile approach because at the end of the 30 days, I can say, I traveled 30 miles. But if you pick the 15-minute approach, you can do the same thing. You do 15 times 30, and that turns into a bunch of hours in a fun way. So walk, run, or bike a mile. That's micro goal number three. Micro goal number four, write down one thing you're grateful for. I won't bore you with the science, but the benefits of gratefulness are legion. Every day, write down one thing you're grateful for. I'm talking about on a piece of paper with a pen or pencil. They can be massive. I'm so grateful to have a job. They, they can be minor. I'm so grateful I found a fantastic parking spot at my job. They can be silly. I love David Bowie, but I'm so grateful it was Ice Ice Baby that came on today and not under pressure. At the end of 30 days, your grateful eyesight will be 2020, and you won't be able to stop seeing things that make you thankful. I use a notebook, and I've listed my title, Everything is Always Working Out for Me which is something I explained in my book, Soundtracks. It's on page 167. My friend James Victori taught me that phrase. Do you want to hear a few of mine? Just, I have a list. Everything's always working out for me. This is, um, I have 234 of these right now, but here's a couple. Just, I'll show you how random they are. Number 209, I had a great operations chat yesterday with my friend, Aaron Hovian. My buddy Aaron um, is an operations whiz and is helping me think through a couple things with my business. Had a great call, wrote it down. Number 210, I had coffee with William today. He's such a great guy, and I'm really encouraged that we reconnected. Number 211, session five of the Full Potential course went really well today. So I've been teaching this course called the Full Potential course, and session five went well. So what did I do? I wrote that down, 212. Jenny helped me figure out a part of my business that I've been confused about. Awesome. I had a great conversation with my wife. So grateful that I have her to bounce ideas off of. Um, number 213, got up early today at 5.45 a.m. to write, and that was awesome. Number 214, um, tonight I got to work out with Caleb, good buddy of mine. Number 215, the dentist was able to fit me in this morning when I had to move my appointment. So these aren't like spectacular odes to gratefulness. I, I want you to hear how normal, and some of them, I mean, that my dentist moved my appointment, like you could go, that's kind of boring. It's not boring to me. I'm grateful about that. So I, I think you learn gratefulness by practicing gratefulness. And it starts with little things like that. So once a day, write down one thing you're grateful for. Number five, write 100 words a day. 
I recently read a book I really liked that was about 25,000 words long. If you write 100 words a day for 30 days in a row, you're more than 10% of the way to a whole book like that. Now, if you don't want to write a book, there's still gobs of benefits to journaling your thoughts each day. I will say one caveat for this one. Beware the temptation to double or triple your output. Famines tend to follow feasts when it comes to goals. Famines tend to follow feasts when it comes to goals. So don't be tempted to go, man, I crushed that 100. I'm going to move it up to 900 tomorrow because what's going to happen is you're going to do the 100. You're going to do the 900 the next day, and then you're not going to do any of that next day, and then none the next day, the next day, the next day, and you won't do the 30 days. Number six, leave your phone in the kitchen each night. What if, and hear me out, this is crazy. What if the secret to great sleep was not bringing every source of entertainment and information ever created in the history of mankind to bed with you every night? What if, what if that was the what if that was the greatest sleep hack in the world? For 30 days, commit to plugging your phone in in another room before you go to sleep. It's so much harder to stay up to 2 a.m. scrolling through Instagram when you don't have a phone in your hand. And I, I would love to tell you that I had stumbled upon some amazing tool or technique to kind of have a healthy relationship with my phone, where it's like, I've got an app and it turns off, or like I'm measuring this, or I've got all, like, here's my system. The only system I've ever found that's 100% foolproof when it comes to your phone is not being in the same room with my phone. If I'm in the same room with my phone, it's like over in the corner, I'm like, how you doing over there? Uh, what? Like, you, is there something I should look up? Oh, yeah, you know what? That's just research. And like, I will be using my phone. The only way, the only foolproof plan I have for not using my phone is leaving it in another room. So for 30 days, leave your phone in the kitchen each night. Just try that. Number seven, drink 64 ounces of water every day. Now, the experts are torn on this one. Some say a gallon of water is okay. Some argue that three liters is the right amount. Some say eight glasses a day is the magic number. But one thing no one says is drink less water. If you're not actively hydrating, try drinking 64 ounces or half a gallon a day. Now, if you're an athlete, pregnant, or a roofer in Arizona, adjust accordingly. I'm, I'm not a doctor. I'm just a writer um, who will completely forget to drink water all day unless I have a goal. So make a goal. Figure out the amount that's right for you and then drink that amount. I keep track of it with a post-it note. That's all I do. I know the glasses in our house are 12 ounces. So when I drink a glass of water, I write down 12. When I drink the second glass, guess what I do? I add the 12 and 12, do that math in my head. I get 24. I write that down. I'm trying to drink 64 ounces of water every day. Again, some people might do 128. They might do you know a bigger amount, a smaller amount, but just be deliberate. Number eight, practice positive affirmations. I tried my best. I swear to you, to avoid this subject when I wrote my book, Soundtracks, because it seems so cheesy. I mean, I grew up with Seinfeld, Serenity Now, and Saturday Live, like, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, everybody likes me. So I was so hardcore against affirmations. But the evidence that the thoughts you choose become the actions you do and the results you get was overwhelming. So start to end your day with a positive set of affirmations. You can write your own, you can pick some, you can be you know, deliberate about that, or you could even use the set that um, we studied in Soundtracks. We came up with something called the New Anthem. It's on page 147 of my book, Soundtracks. And we actually studied what happens when people repeat this for 30 days. And spoiler alert, it, it was good. It was very good, the things that happened. You can see that all in the book. Number nine. This one's going to step on some toes a little bit. This one's going to be a little challenging. Um, but I think if we could do this one, wow, the world would be amazing. Number nine, micro goal, overlook one offense. Overlook one offense. Can you imagine how much better the world would be if people learned how to overlook offenses? Dare to dream. Dare to dream. For 30 days, commit to not complaining when a friend is five minutes late to a coffee. For 30 days, commit to not responding to a neighbor's political post on Facebook. For 30 days, commit to not overreacting when someone cuts you off in traffic. For 30 days, commit to not being frustrated when someone interrupts you in the middle of a busy day. This one might seem a little weird, but trust me, you have ample opportunities to put it into practice. And just so we're clear, I'm not saying don't be angry for 30 days because anger is a healthy emotion. I'm saying pick one offense each day and then overlook it. Can you imagine if the internet did that, how great the internet would be, how much better the internet would be if people decided, you know what, I'm going to make a goal 
to overlook one offense because I find myself getting easily offended. So I'm just going to make it a goal, see what happens. Number 10, spend 10 minutes planning your day. When I spend 10 minutes planning my day before it begins, I usually end up with an extra hour of productivity. That's a pretty good return on investment, the old ROI, if you will. For 10 minutes, commit for 30 days to review your calendar, check your to-do list, and adjust accordingly before you get caught up on your day. You can use any planner you want or just a piece of paper if that's your jam. I use two things really when I review my day. I use my Google Calendar and I use my finished calendar. One's a small digital calendar, One's a massive paper calendar. I've used the Finish Calendar for the last 10 years. I absolutely love it. You can check one out at finishcalendar.com. We'll link it in the show notes. And then I think we need a bonus. I think we need a bonus one um, because bonuses are nice. We've already done 10. Bonus, go quiet for 10 minutes. Go quiet for 10 minutes. Other than when you're asleep, every other of the 1,440 minutes in your day are going to be loud. Take back 10 of them. Rescue 10 of them. You can use an app like Headspace. You can sit on a park and a bench. You can go for a walk in the woods. You can pray if that's your thing. Just set a timer for 10 minutes and then get quiet. And heads up on this one. The first few times are going to feel like an eternity. Oh, you'll be amazed how long 10 minutes is when you try to be quiet and kind of just sit with your thoughts. Feels like an eternity. But within 10 days, two weeks, you'll start to fall in like with this idea and then eventually love. So those are 10 things with a bonus 11 because I'm I'm generous, but try one of those for 30 days. You can start any day too, by the way. You could start on January 10th. You could start on a Monday. You could start on a Tuesday. You can start on May 22nd if you're just now listening to this episode. It's up to you. So what if you only, what if you only go for 15 days? Like you try it for 30 days. You make this going, you go, I'm going to do it for 30 days. What if you miss the third day and you feel like quitting the whole thing? What if you get busy one day and you can't do the micro goal? Well, Let me tell you two magical words, no problem. I'll even give you three magical words, no big deal. We're not aiming for perfect. We're not. Let's say you get 15 days. Of the 30, you do the micro goal for 15 days. That's 50% of 30. If you only get 50%, you'd make it into the Baseball Hall of Fame with that batting average. You would be the greatest hitter who has ever played the game. There would be statues of you outside of ballparks if you hit 500%. That's 50 plus an extra zero. I just did that math too. You'd be the best three-point shooter in the history of the NBA. You'd be the luckiest gambler that ever lived. If you won 50% of your blackjack hands or 50% of your poker tournaments, people would write poems about you. You'd have the best NFL completion record for touchdowns. If every other pass was a touchdown, you'd be amazing. So it's okay if you get 50%. That's way more. That's infinitely more than you were going to do if you didn't do any goal at all. So don't let perfectionism steal the joy of a micro goal. Why do I love these so much? Because micro goals deliver massive results. Pick one of them. I'll give you the list one more time. Real quick review. Ready? Number one, read 10 pages of success book. Number two, encourage one person. Number three, walk, run, or bike a mile. You can also do just whatever exercise you want for 15 minutes. Number four, write down one thing you're grateful for. Number five, write 100 words a day. Number six, leave your phone in the kitchen each night. Number seven, drink 64 ounces of water every day. Number eight, practice positive affirmations. Number nine, overlook one offense. Number 10, spend 10 minutes planning your day. And number 11, bonus, go quiet for 10 minutes. Those are the micro goals. And if you do them for 30 days, I promise you, you'll be surprised at the results you get. Thank you so much for listening today. We'll put all the links in the show notes as always. And thank you for reviewing my podcast. A podcast about goals should have a goal when it comes to reviews. And our goal is 1,000 reviews. Every review brings us one step closer to achieving that. So thank you. Please make sure you subscribe or follow so that you don't miss another episode. I'll see you next week. And remember, all it takes is a goal. Thanks for listening. To learn more about the All It Takes is a Goal podcast and to get access to today's show notes and exclusive content from John Acuff, visit acuff.me slash podcast. Thanks again for joining us. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode of the All It Takes is a Goal podcast.